G'day guys, Moose here. Welcome back, we're inside the garage again. My number one priority for you guys is always to be nice and safe. So this video is all about the drop saw. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> it is my favorite piece of equipment in here. I use it all the time and I'm gonna teach you. I've been teaching kids to use these for a long time now. And I've got seven, seven hot tips to keep you nice and safe and always have you in control and nice and confident. All right, let's get into this one. All right, before we get into it, this drop saw I love to death. It has done thousands of cuts. I couldn't live without it. Drop saws or miter saws kind of come in three varieties. This is a sliding compound saw. So it slides because I want that extra depth of cut and it does a lot of different compound angles and it even swivels that way as well. You can get normal compound saws that same same but it doesn't slide. And then you kind of have more of your generic conventional saws where usually they're smaller drop saws, um, they don't have many angle options and it's more for lightweight work. Whatever your budget is, if you're in the market to buy one, grab kind of the best you can afford. Um, spend a bit more coin you get a lot more features they'll refer to them as a certain size this is a 12 inch drop saw so they're talking about the size of the blade um, common sizes 10 and 12 you can get them smaller this video I'm not going to do too much with the features I just want to keep you safe that's my priority in this video All right. My drop saw the features on this side. This locks it down, so when I want to use it, I have to undo it, and that's when I want to store it. Um, depending on what I'm cutting, if I don't need the slide, I will lock it in, so it's just stuck at the back. Um, it's a little bit safer. This is the safety trigger. You can't accidentally fire it up without pressing kind of a double action. So we're not going to accidentally fire the thing up. Let's hook around the other side. For this video, all I want to show you on this side is the locking mechanism that determines the angle that our saw will cut at. So at the moment it's set at zero, which means it's 90 degree to the back fence. To move mine, I twist this guy in and to the right, use the trigger, and I can lock it in at whatever setting I want. You'll find that it's got a few preset ones that it will lock in at 22 and a half, 15, 31.6, and 45. So let's swing it back to zero, turn it to the right, so it's locked in like that, it's nice and safe, and it can't go anywhere else. This is the trigger from this side. Again, you have to push the trigger in to kind of push in, I guess, the safety lock to squeeze the trigger. And the guard retracts up and down as we use it. All right, let's get into the safety side of things. All right, the priority in the workshop is always us. So my safety tip number one is a no-brainer. We have to look after our eyes and ears. This machine, it's quite noisy, and in the cutting motion, anything could kind of go wrong. Ideally never, but just in case, we look after our eyes and ears. I don't want to damage something that I can't grow back. So, earmuffs, easy. My glasses are special shatterproof ones. Um, depending on what you got, safety glasses like the kids wear. Number one rule is always our PPE. Rule number two, like I've explained, it has a safety switch on it. You can't accidentally fire this machine up without doing two separate actions. So you've got to be careful, but there are some provisions to look after you. Safety switch, two actions. If yours doesn't have a safety switch, it's maybe time to upgrade. Safety tip number three is everybody that uses a drop saw is right-handed. 
You stand here to the left, you cut down the center. Your right hand is the one that always uses the trigger every time. If you're left-handed or not, this is how you learn. That way you avoid, and I've seen it too many times, where people are crossing their arms over. Um, horrible mistake, please don't do that. And that leads me on to, both hands have a job all the time. A right hand uses a trigger, a left hand always has a job. I'll explain it a little bit down the track where you make a few cuts. So, number three is both hands have a job and you're always right-handed when you use it. That leads me to tip number four. You always, when you use the machine, stand left of center. God forbid something goes wrong, but if it does, it normally happens straight out the back, occasionally forward, but it's usually on that center line. So, we stand a little bit left of center. Safety tip number five is using the clamp. On this guy, the clamp is interchangeable on both sides. So depending on what you're cutting, you move it around where you need. But we clamp everything. Making sure your job is against the fence, your clamp is where it should be, and you wind him down. Always put a little bit of weight on my clamp Give it a couple of tweaks until it doesn't move. I'm trying to min minimize things that can go wrong. So it's against the fence and it's clamped. That's tip number five. And my last tip, tip number six, and this is super important, that you should always be cautious, careful, but confident on the drop saw. Know that you've got it clamped. Know that it's lined up exactly where you want. Know that there's no way this can move on you. You've got your safety gear on, your hands have a job to do, and you're ready to go. What happens when a frog's car won't start? It needs a jump start. And if that doesn't work, then it needs to be towed. All right. <laughs> Rate my dad joke out of 10, leave a comment. All right, let's get back to work. Number seven. Um, I'm not sure if it's a hot tip or not. It's just my thoughts and feelings on about the drop saw and some of the timber we might use. Any timber you've got that if it has a bit of a twist in it or is a bit bowed, um, I wouldn't use it personally. It's no good on the tools. Sometimes it can be dangerous, but it also kind of just ruins projects and joinery. It makes it really hard to use. So I try to steer clear of it. If you have to use it, anything with a bit of a twist in it, it becomes hard to clamp. Anything with a bow in it, make sure you cut it with the bow curling up. The idea is so if you cut through it, it bends down, it bends flat, and your saw cut will open up instead of close and bind on the saw. Anything that binds on the saw doesn't end too well. And my other thought was, um, I'm not a big fan of jumping on the power tools if, you know, if you're not feeling it, if you've got that gut kind of feeling that I shouldn't be on the tools today, if you're not quite with it or you're a bit crook, um, Wait another day. Um, don't force the issue. Listen to your gut instincts. They're always correct. And um, that'll keep us nice and safe. All right. Let's get on to the next bit. Quick recap before we do a couple cuts. It's super important that you always got your PPE on. There's a safety switch so you won't get in trouble. Both hands always have a job. It's important that you stand a little bit to the left of center. Use the clamp every time. And again, cautious, careful, but confident in your equipment and your skills. All right, let's chat about how to use it. All right, let's run through what we've just learned. We'll put it into action. So, I'm gonna cut, I don't know, 
four centimeters off this board. Make my mark, rule my line, and I'm always a big fan of making it obvious the waist, the waist side of the line, because if you get it wrong, when you make your cut, the blade is probably about three mil thick. And we don't want to cut our pieces we need three mil short. So, I've got it pushed against the fence. I line it up with the outside edge of the tooth, the tooth on this side. Swing my clamp around. Clamp it in. I will check it again. I'm still happy where it's going to go. Got my safety stuff on. Standing to the left of center. Both hands have a job. This hand's hanging on nice and tight. I like to put it there because if something goes a little bit wrong, I'll feel it. If my board isn't perfect against the fence, I'll notice it and it keeps it out of the way. Hence, both hands have a job. Check I'm still good, ready to go. It's as simple as that. We'll do another one. So. I make my measurements, give myself a line. I mark on the waist side, scribble whatever you need to. I'm against the fence. I'm lining it up with this edge of the tooth. That looks good. Bit of pressure on the clamp, wind him up. It's not gonna move. Still happy, my hand has a job. I much prefer it to fire up the saw close-ish, close-ish to our board. It makes me nervous when students fire it up up the top and work all the way down. So I sit about there. Principle's the same, it doesn't really matter the thickness of the timber you're cutting, but I should say you should be nice and smooth all the way through it. Shouldn't be a jerky movement, should be smooth, nice beautiful cuts, should have little little tear out. Uh, and that means you're doing really well. Alright. Thank you guys. For this bit, I'll just make a few more different cuts out of some different materials, and um, you guys can just watch this one in fast forward. Please take note of what my hands do in particular. My bonus tip out of that would be, if you're getting to the point where your bits of timber are getting too small, and you can't safely use your clamp, it's time to get big, bigger bits of timber. Don't, don't waste your time with the little stuff. Um, it's not worth the risk. All right. Thanks guys. Last but not least, the maintenance on a drop saw is pretty minimal. Um, they're just almost the perfect machine. Every now and then, I'll do a couple cuts on the 45 and on the 90 degrees, the locking positions on the table, and just check that they still are nice and accurate. So using your square, whatever, whatever you've got at home. So this one's still nice and good. Um, the biggest no-no I ever see is people persisting with their blades for much too longer than they should especially if you're cutting lots of hardwoods. Um, it's important that your blade stays nice and sharp. It does become a hazard, does become a safety issue when they get too blunt. You're forcing the machine to do harder work than it should. Um, 
after I've used it for a bunch of times, I'll give it a blast with the compressor, um, blast out any of the sawdust components, I'll pick it up, I'll go underneath, I'll shoot all around it. Um, so get rid of the dust out of any of the moving parts. And to be honest, once in a blue moon, any of the pivot points, I will give it a light spray with some WD-40. Um, but I admit that's once in a blue moon. Um, within reason, your drop saws are pretty indestructible. I hope you got the confidence now to use your drop saws, or if you haven't got one, go out and grab one. The best bit of kit you'll have in your workshop. Finally, from my family to yours, thank you so much. Um, we love that you guys are involved, and please click all the buttons you meant to, the likes and subscribes, and the notifications, and um, we'll see you around. Bye guys. And I'm going to teach you how to use yours, blah, 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 sorry. Push down on the little button, bugger, <laughs> I got it wrong. Yes. Bugger. Your saw will come with a, come with a, come, come. I hope your saw doesn't come. <laughs> Number seven. Ah, that one's horrible. Number seven. Seven. Damn it. God, surely one of those is perfect.